Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example deals again with two separate areas, but in this case the areas are not symmetrical, so we can't just find the area of one and simply double it. We have to calculate the area of each one. And notice here the area between the two curves, we have the parabola, which is higher than the straight line, but here it's in reverse, the straight line is higher than the parabola. So when we calculate our small area elements, dA, in this case dA will be y2 minus y1 times the width dx, but in this case it'll be y1 minus y2 times dx. So here the parabola is, is on top and here the straight line is on top. So you do have to denote that with the area elements, they will look different. And that also means that we're going to find the areas, let's call this a1, let's call this area a2. We'll have to do that separately with separate limits of integration. We've already indicated the places where they cross, and notice we also want to keep it over here, so the line x equals 1 and the line um, x equals 0, which is the y-axis, so we want to do this area element right here and this area right here in order to find the total area between the curves. So let's start with a1. a1 is equal to the integral We'll worry about the limits later of dA, and dA in that case is going to be y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1 times dx, and the limits of integration are going to be from x equals negative 2 to x equals 0. So from negative 2 to 0 for the first integral, and notice that y2 is defined over here, and y1 is defined over there. So let's go ahead and plug those in. So we know a1 is equal to the integral of y2, which is 4 minus x squared minus y1, and y1 is x plus 2, so it becomes minus x minus 2 times dx. All right, simplifying that just a little bit because we combine this, so a1 is equal to the integral of minus x squared minus x, 4 minus 2 is 2, all times, oh, that would be plus 2, uh, let's do that, go ahead, plus 2 times dx, there we go, and the limits are going to be from minus 2 to 0, minus 2 to 0, and now we're ready to find the area of our first area, a1. So that becomes equal to minus x cubed over 3, minus x squared over 2, plus 2x, evaluated from minus 2 to 0. Notice that when we plug in the upper limit, we get nothing. Plug in the lower limit, well, it's upper limit minus the lower limit, so that equals minus. When we plug in the lower limit, we get minus 2 cubed, that's minus 8 times the minus is plus 8 over 3. Plug in the lower limit, that gives us 4, but with the minus, that becomes minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2. And when we plug in the limit in here, we get minus 2 times 2 is minus 4, like that. So now, when we combine that, notice we get a, um, a minus times a minus 6, that's a plus 6, minus 8 thirds. That would be equal to, uh, that would be 6, that would be 18 thirds minus 8 thirds, because 6 times 3 is 18, that's 18 thirds minus 8, which is equal to 10 thirds which is the area of the first region, A1. So now we're going to do the same for A2, but notice in that case the dA has the y's reversed. So in this case we have A2, which is equal to the integral. The limits are now going to go from x equals minus 3 to x equals minus 2. Of the quantity y1 minus y2 times dx. So this is going to be equal to the integral from minus 3 to minus 2. y1 is x plus 2 minus y2, and y2 is 4 minus x squared, so it becomes minus 4 plus x squared times dx. Basically, it's the same integral, but now we have all the signs reversed. So that will be equal to the integral from minus 3 to minus 2 of x squared plus x minus 2 times dx. Notice it's the same as what we have over there, but with all the signs reversed. And so now that will be equal to 
x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 minus 2x, evaluated from minus 3 to minus 2. So plugging in those limits, let's see what we get. Plugging in the upper limit, we get minus 8 over 3. Plug in that, we get 4 over 2, that's plus 2. Plug in this, that would be um, minus 2 times a minus 2, that's a plus 4. And subtract from that, when we plug in the lower limit, and when we plug in the lower limit, we get, let's see, um, minus 27 over 3, which is minus 9. We get 9 over 2. And here we get minus 3 times a minus 2, that's a plus 6. Of course, we're subtracting all that. Okay, notice that here, this is the exact same thing that we have over there, but with the signs reversed, which means that will then become... Mm, but there's a negative in front of that. Let's see here. That would be 6, 18. That would be, again, 10 over 3. So this is 10 divided by 3 because here we didn't have the negative in front. And this minus times this minus. Let's see what happens here. So we have a minus 9 plus a 9 half. That's minus 9 over 2 plus 6. So it would be minus, a minus 9 over 2 plus 12 over 2. So that would be 3 over 2, but we have a minus, that's minus 3 over 2. So this is equal to 10 over 3 minus, oh, that's too bad. We have a different denominator. So that would be minus 3 over 2. So the common denominator there is 6. That would be 20 over 6 minus 9 over 6, which is 11 over 6. So this would be equal to... 11 over 6 as the total, oh, wait a minute, that's the area A2. So this is A2, and this is A1. Whew, we're not done yet. Now we have to add the two areas together. So let's do that. A1 plus A2 is equal to, A1 is 10 over 3, and A2 is 11 over 6. So the common denominator is 6, so that would be equal to 20 over 6 plus 11 over 6, which is equal to 31 over 6. And finally, we have the total area. Again, notice, if there's no symmetry, you do have to work out both integrals separately. Have both of them, the limits of integration for each of the areas. Notice that you have to define the areas very carefully, your DAs. Know which is on top and which is on the bottom to get the height of your area elements. And then when you add it all together, that's the final answer. And that's how it's done.